Hello friends. In this video, we will study about refraction through rectangular glass slab and lateral shift. Now, EQRS is a glass slab and this glass slab say is placed in a medium air. Say if AB is the incident ray, say this is AB. which is an instant ray which is striking the glass slab on the surface PQ then this ray will undergo refraction that means the refracted ray will instead of going straight this refracted ray will bend towards the normal and it will move towards surface SR so say BC is the refracted ray and is moving towards the surface SR. Now again at surface SR refraction will take place that is this light will come out into the medium air again. So here again the refraction will take place and finally the emergent ray which will be which will be coming out will be like this. Okay say so we call this as C. C D as the emergent ray. Okay now let's say this is I1, this is R1, this is I2 and this is R2. I1 is the angle of incidence for the surface PQ, R1 is the angle of refraction for surface PQ and I2 and R2 are the angle of incidence and angle of refraction for surface SR. Now if I apply Snell's law at say surface PQ then I can write refractive index of glass with respect to air since the light is traveling from air into the glass so I will write the refractive index of glass with respect to air equals to sine I1 upon sine R1 simply the Snell's law we have applied over here say this is expression number one now when I apply Snell's law at surface SR okay so what we get over here is I can write refractive index of air with respect to glass because if you see on the surface SR the light is coming out into the air means it is moving from glass into the air okay so here I can write this as sin I2 upon sin R2 or I can write 1 upon that is refractive index of glass with respect to air okay this can be written as sin I2 upon sin R2 because refractive index of air with respect to glass is nothing but the reciprocal of the refractive index of glass with respect to air. So I can write G mu A as 1 upon A mu G. Okay. So this is equation number 2. Now, if I multiply these two equations, multiplying equation 1 and 2, I'm multiplying these two equations. So, what I get over here, I can write sin of I1 upon sin of R1 into sine of I2 upon sine of R2 equals to A mu G multiplied by 1 upon A mu G which is nothing but 1 both A mu G and A mu G will be cancelled and we get 1 over here okay now if you consider this figure R1 uh, R1 and I2 both these angles will be same because they are the alternate angles 
so since r1 equals to i2 so this term and this term will cancel and i get sin i1 upon sin r2 equals to 1 okay or i can write sin i1 equals to sin r2 or i1 equals to r2 okay now from this relation i1 equals to r2 what we get over here is i1 is the angle of incidence and r2 if you see for the overall figure it is the angle of emergence so here what we get is that the angle of incidence and the angle of emergence both are same now this also proves that the emergent ray this emergent ray cd is parallel to the direction of the incident ray that is the cd and uh, say if i call this as say ae okay so this cd and ae both are what parallel to each other so this distance say we call this distance as cf that is this is the minimum distance or you can say the shortest distance between the incident between the direction of the incident ray and the direction of the emergent ray now this distance cf if i represent it by x this is known as lateral shift so basically what happens when the ray of light passes through a glass slab it does not change its direction okay remember here the uh, light is not changing its direction but what it is doing is it's simply changing its path it is laterally shifting it is not going in some other direction if the ray of light say is going in the north direction it is going in the north direction but it is laterally shifting okay so this shift of the uh, ray of light is known as the lateral shift.